Just a little bit about ACCA for those who don't know. Uh, ACCA currently has 2,000 members in Yorkshire and 2,000 um, students. Uh, worldwide though, uh, we have 162,000 members and uh, just shy of 450,000 students studying across 173 countries. Um, so we've got a big global reach. Um, and really what we're trying to do is to, to add public value by acting in the public interest, uh, promoting ethical business um, and helping grow economies. Um, also, ACCA is very proud um, to support Leeds City Council's Foster for Leeds um, initiative, which aims to provide all children with help, safe, um, sorry, happy and safe homes that they can thrive and prosper. Um, your business can help though. Um, and if you're interested in building a partnership um, with um, that great um, initiative, uh, please can you speak with uh, Auli uh, Miles today um, and just catch her afterwards um, to um, see where you can help. Our next lecture is in, um, on the 28th of February and um, we've got a guest speaker from Welcome from Yorkshire and it's all about the Tour de France um, and what that means to Yorkshire. Um, Appraisals for ACCA members, um, please um, fill them in. There will be an e-survey um, and um, it will be sent out tomorrow morning. Okay, so that's the formal bit from ACCA. So the important thing is obviously our um, great speaker tonight. Um, and I'd like to introduce Tom Reardon. Um, he's the youngest ever Chief Exec of Leeds City Council. Tom's worked hard um, to achieve the ambition, his ambition on making Leeds the, the best city in the UK. Um, Doing my prep tonight, I was actually a little bit astounded by um, the CV that Tom has, and I, I think I quite like his CV. Um, his achievements to date, um, saving 100 million efficiency savings without reducing the frontline services um, of Leeds Council. Um, good, uh, good quality assessments across adult social care and other key services. Uh, constructing the state-of-the-art arena. Record council tax collection rates doubling the number of apprentices, and also removing child services from f special measures. Um, for, for external partnerships, Tom strives to, to make it easy to do business with the council. Um, internally, he promotes a value-based culture, um, and I think the, the most important thing is that Tom is a real people person. Um, he, when he first started, he visited all 33 wards um, within Leeds, and is actually today met 5,000 of his own employees. Um, I also heard that he's played no small part in bringing the Tour de France to Yorkshire. So please can you give him a warm welcome, a big cut, um, to welcome him to the stage. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. And uh, it's great to see so many people here. And I've just tweeted what an eclectic bunch you are as well. Um, I, uh, I've got a bet on with somebody that I will still be the youngest ever chief executive of Leeds City Council when I leave. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's going to happen. And just to give a, a big um, thank you to ACCA and uh, Leeds Met tonight. And just to give another plug for the Foster and Adoption Service, an hourly who's here to, do you want to just put your hand Hello. there she is, yeah, um, to, if, you, if you're interested in, uh, in helping us, we need about um, 200 more foster carers in Leeds, there are about 80 um, children at the moment as we speak who would be really, um, you know, it would transform their lives to, uh, to find somewhere else to be able to go in the city and come out of care. Um, the direct care of the local authority. Um, my background is that I was in care as a toddler. Um, my mum and dad had health problems before I was five. Um, my gran moved into our house at that point and um, our lives sort of settled down again and it was sorted out for me. So kinship care, you know, the wider extended family is something that we're really keen on getting people involved with but it can change people's lives, it can turn things around and that's why some of the services like that that we provide are so, so important. Um, I thought I'd start by talking a bit about um, a little story, and I apologise for those of you who may have heard this before, but I think there's a lot of people who are here who haven't heard me speak recently. And um, I did, gave a, speak, a speech recently to a, a fantastic initiative called Better Culture. And any of you who, um, who are interested in how to um, 
present differently and how if you've sat and either given a presentation and I, I wouldn't say accountancy is, is in any way uninteresting um, I, I think that would be a, a terrible thing to say uh, especially with so many eminent accountants in the room um, but if you've either seen a presentation or um, or given one yourself uh, better culture is re really worth looking at because it, it's about you've got to present and the slides you have a limited amount of time and the slides are on a loop it comes out of a Japanese thing called Pecha Kuchi, I think it's called. Um, and it's really hard. It's the hardest thing that I've ever done in terms of presenting, obviously, apart from tonight. And um, I, we had a special occasion in Brudenell Social Club, which is a very famous um, venue in Leeds, particularly for those of you who like music. And I had to present on the importance of failure. So all of us were, were presenting on the importance of failure. And the story I told... Um, at the start of that was my a, a true story of my own from when I was um, running or part of um, an organisation called Yorkshire Forward, and I've some I've got colleagues ex colleagues here um, who, who it's really good to see who uh, used to work with me there, and um, two days before Nelson Mandela was due to arrive in Leeds, the council got a phone call um, from his people saying that he was he. he desperately wanted to raise some money for his charity um, on the on the trip and he was interested in a um, quarter of a million pounds that would just about do it so someone in the council sort of had an emergency meeting and they said why don't we ring Yorkshire forward so I got I took the phone call and they said can you organize a business lunch um, it was very short notice um, obviously two days before so we uh, we rang the Queen's and we said, how do you fancy a business lunch, Nelson Mandela, charity, will you do it for free? Yes. Um, so we, ran, we then rang 15 businesses and sold the tables within 10 minutes. And my great regret is that I could have pitched that amount probably at double or treble what we did pitch. So we could have raised even more, but it was sold out straight away. So we were, because we'd organised it, we were in the sort of, group of people who were being introduced to him at the start. So I don't know about you, but for me, Nelson Mandela is, is probably the person um, who was at that time for me in terms of when I've grown up and you know world politics and everything else that I would, I would want to meet. If I had to choose one person, it would have been him. So I was at the end of the row of dignitaries and I was, he, he came in front of me and I, I had my hand there ready to shake his hand and we put these uh, this group of South African dancers on as a you know a way of sort of welcoming him to the to the event. And he saw the South African dancers and he turned and he started dancing as he as you probably saw him on telly sometimes um, do. And he went off to talk to them, and I was left there <laughs> um, hanging by uh, by Nelson Mandela. And he went into the into the occasion. Lucas Radderby was there. It was actually the first, I think, I, I do believe it was the first time he ever met Lucas Radderby. Those of you who, who aren't aware, Lucas Radderby was the captain of Leeds at the time, known as the chief, captain of South Africa, South African football team, and an idol, a hero of Nelson Mandela's. Um, so, you know, I, it, was a, it was a near miss for me. A month later, we'd been asked to organise um, a conference. We'd been involved in organising a great group of conferences that used to happen we, we were one of the sponsors called the Yorkshire International Business Convention a, a great man called Mike Firth um, who used to run these uh, he still does there's one out in Bridlington if you get a chance it's well worth a visit um, he'd, he'd got Bill Clinton to come so Bill Clinton arrived as it happened just when I arrived so there was a gap in the in the sort of fence where he was he was signing autographs so I thought to myself well I've missed Mandela, but Clinton is not a bad second. So went into the went into this gap in the fence, signing autographs. It's a true story. He was I was in front of him, like this. He got a tap on his shoulder, not from Nelson Mandela. Um, that would have been really spooky, um, but no, from from one of his security people. And he he sort of went off and and left. So I was uh, obviously thinking, is it me? I got back to the office and there was, a, there was an email invite to the then Prime Minister of, uh, of the country, Tony Blair, with, for me and about 25 business people. 
So I thought, well, you know, come on, Mandela, Clinton, Blair is not a bad third. So I, um, so I went to the event, but I had a problem because there was a clash. I had a clash. I had to give evidence to a scrutiny inquiry in Grimsby that night. So I only had half an hour. So I was there at the event, and I'm not the sort of person who sort of rushes up to people to say hello. And it got to half an hour, and I was thinking to myself, this is going to be an incredible story to tell at future speech events that I've missed <laughs> the three great statesmen of, you know, the, uh, of the era. So I was on my way out, walking out the room, and the Prime Minister turned around, and the guy who was with him said, oh, this is Tom Raiden, the Chief Exec of or the director of um, Yorkshire Forward. And, um, and it crossed my mind for a split second. Do I say, I'm sorry, Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to Grimsby. <laughs> for those of you who aren't, don't know Yorkshire and Humber very well, just ask the person next to you about Grimsby. Um, Anyway, I didn't. So that was my story about failure. I failed to fail to meet the Prime Minister in the end. Anyway, moving on. Um, I'm here to talk about um, Leeds and the future of Leeds and the opportunities that are in the city and the business opportunities in particular. Um, and what I thought I would do is talk a bit about the economy to start with. But I, I also wanted to talk a bit about um, how what the future might hold for public policy in terms of the economy. I was given evidence yesterday to a select committee down in London about how we can get more power to, to places like Leeds to try and shape our own destiny a bit more. So I'm going to talk about that a bit. Um, I'm going to also talk a little bit about some of the things we did in the council in Leeds a couple of years ago, about 18 months ago, to try and chart our future as well and talk a bit about the future of local government. So I'm going to talk for another sort of 15, 20 minutes, but then leave plenty of time for questions. So it'll be really embarrassing if there aren't any questions. So I would really encourage all of you to, uh, to think of something interesting to ask me, even if you're not going to hear anything interesting now. So um, in terms of the Leeds economy, I think it's fair to say, if you look at the Chamber of Commerce's recent, um, the recent survey that they did, if you look at things like the rental levels in the city, um, and even if you just go for the, you know, what's it feel like when you, t when you experience the city centre, particularly at the moment, um, I think everybody would, would feel, uh, lots of people would feel that Leeds is on the up again. Um, I think Rick de Blaby described it as Leeds has found its mojo again. Um, and there was, a, there was a bit of a, there's a funny thing about Leeds, those of you who like reading, um, there's, a, there's a great book um, called The Promised Land, um, which is uh, really worth, it's by a guy called Anthony Clavain, and it's about the, the city, it's about the, the, the sort of parallel story of the Jewish community in Leeds, um, the city of Leeds, and the football club. Um, the football club is obviously quite a live issue for us at the moment. Um, I won't be commenting in my speech about that, but I'm happy to answer any questions, <laughs> if you like to, um, about that. I'm sure Bradford fans will probably ask them, uh, maybe not Huddersfield fans, after the, uh, the weekend. But um, Anthony Clavain captures in this book this great, the, almost the, the psyche of Leeds, in the sense that it's got one side of its brain and one side of its personality, which is very confident and very successful and very entrepreneurial and very self-starting. So we were the city of a thousand trades. We were the place that Marks and Spencer started in the Kurgate market. We were um, with a home to Asda, with a, if you like, the regional capital of Yorkshire in economic terms. And um, some would say more than that. Um, I, I couldn't comment. But um, the, there's, a, there's a great confidence that is almost seen by others sometimes in the other cities as arrogance. But then there's this other side to Leeds, which is a bit um, slightly insecure, slightly um, not as out there as maybe a place or some other cities, particularly London, are in terms of that self-confidence and um, slightly questioning at times of, of what we're trying to do. And um, I think what we've 
what that had done over the last few years was maybe eroded some of that confidence in investing in leads and in finding a way of um, finding those business opportunities. And what we've tried to do is, is bring a bit of that back by having a clear strategy for the city and a clear way of supporting people to, to grow their businesses and to, um, and to succeed. The, um, the, I'm just thrown slightly by somebody leaving already, but I'm not <laughs> uh, I used to work in the UN, um, and we, uh, we had this great, the, there's a great moment where you'd come to this agreement, you spent two weeks, um, you know, agreeing a, a paragraph of text, and um, everybody had their planes to catch, so you got to, it always ended with you in this room, a bit bigger than this, with everybody sat around, you know, the, the, the picture, everybody desperately say, sort of thinking, please don't anyone object. And this one guy from, um, it was actually the Kuwaiti delegate, put his hand up just as everyone was having to leave. And everyone, I, oh no. And um, he, he asked a question and realised that he was in the wrong meeting. <laughs> and and uh, there was this, oh, thank goodness for that. And uh, everyone embraced. Anyway, that was maybe somebody who was in the wrong, uh, the wrong meeting. So just, just to talk a bit about what are the growth opportunities in Leeds? So what are the key if you like, sectoral um, developments that are happening. And healthcare is the first one that I would talk about. Le Leeds has a great critical mass on healthcare. We've got the biggest teaching hospital in Europe. We've got um, fantastic um, expertise in all the universities, but if I dare say it in this august institution, um, particularly from uh, Dr. John Fisher over at Leeds University and things like musculoskeletal expertise, um, there have been spin-outs out of that university that have led to great companies like Surgical Innovations, um, Brandon Medical, EMIS and others. We have great expertise in informatics. Um, in the council we have the second biggest social care department in the country um, and we have the NHS England headquarters in Leeds as well as five associated quangos. Some of you may even work in them. So what we have is a real opportunity in probably alongside perhaps um, the uh, low carbon sector, the biggest growth area in, in the world in terms of how do you tackle this problem of healthcare for a growing elderly population, a growing demographic where the expectations of people um, about their health, um, the, you know, the, basically their, um, how long they're gonna live increases and how do we deal with that and how do we pay for it um, in the world? And um, I, uh, I'm not going to comment on uh, anything else. <laughs> um, I, uh, so so we've, got a, we've got a plan, we've got a strategy for how we capitalise on that critical mass. And I think it's already starting to bear fruit. We've, there's, there are, there's a government initiative called Pioneer Status for... Um, the, uh, the NHS and social care and we're the biggest, we're the only city that has achieved that pioneer status. We're looking for genuine flexibilities from the government about how we deal with um, health and social care in this city and I feel sure that there are going to be tremendous opportunities in that sector, not just in terms of new entrants into the marketplace but also in terms of the spin-offs that can happen from the work that we're doing already and there's, ar there's already global interest in what we're doing in Leeds and I would fully expect um, particularly in terms of how the informatics agenda um, moves forward that that will be one that we will definitely see more of in the future. <coughs> in terms of um, other excuse me other key sectors we have the digital and creative sector and it's all it's quite in it's quite easy sometimes to talk about the big the big companies and the big institutions but the reason I mentioned digital and creative second is because we have a, a massively, I think, untapped asset in our city with the um, number of micro and small businesses in the um, digital and creative sector. We have um, an excellent small company actually called AQL, who are, if you've seen the blue phone boxes in the city, um, who are developing some very innovative approaches. We have um, organisations like Duke Studios who are if you like, an incubator for fantastic new graduate businesses that are coming out of this university and, and the others as well. Um, <coughs> we have um, plans for places like New Dock, 
what was Clarence Dock, that where there are very interesting ideas about how we can capitalise on the sort of digital and tech um, uh, plans that we've got for the city, um, which is work in progress at the moment. We have new entrants into the city like Plusnet, and we have a great we have great little clusters of um, the sports digital companies. So we have William Hill and Skybet in terms of um, online gambling, who are probably using the most state of the art technology behind their systems to make the most of what's happening in in the city, um, in in that that industry, as well as people like Prozone. Um, and others who are, if you like, data analytics companies. So I think there's, there's great, again, great opportunities there. And if you go down to places like Marshalls Mill, um, Tower Works, they're starting to fill up with, you know, a lot of these entrepreneurs. And I think one of the big challenges for the, for the local enterprise partnership in this part of the world, and indeed <coughs> us as a council, is how do we support those smaller businesses? How do we do more to help? individuals because after all it is individuals who start businesses it's individuals who make them up and sometimes I think it's been as somebody who's worked in economic development a lot over the last few years it's probably not been aimed enough at those people so it's an it's an issue that we're actively um, challenging the LEP I think to to look at and to see how we can can respond and the, I, I suppose digital and creative is a great area where um, where more of that could happen. Financial and professional services, I won't say much about because I think it's self-evident the people in the room, you know, what an important sector that is. Leeds is renowned for our, our expertise in this area. We have a great, um, you know, critical mass here, which is the, it's the biggest outside London. I think the, um, I think a lot of it is about how we work together through the, um, organisations like ACCA to make sure that we're telling that story. Um, we have we have plans to try and what you might call near shore. So how do we make sure that if people are moving out of London, they don't go abroad, they come to this part of the world? Um, how do we make sure that we've got a talent um, sort of bank of people, including yourselves, who are coming out of the universities, who are coming out of the colleges with the technical skills that we need um, to progress in the, the businesses and the organisations, both big and small, in that sector? And Peter Hill from Yorkshire Building Society, the chief exec, is, uh, sorry, the Leeds Building Society. Um, I'm going to get killed uh, by somebody now. Um, one of my good friends is the chief exec of um, Yorkshire Building Society, Chris Pilling. So apologies to both of those brilliant institutions. Um, anybody who's tweeting at the moment. Um, and, uh, but Peter Hill is, is looking at, with Leeds and Partners, um, our investment organisation is looking at how we can do more to to help, I think, help that sector help itself really because I don't think it's a sector that needs um, particularly slugs of public subsidy. It's about how they support the, um, the network of companies that make up the wider economy. Interested to talk about that more if you'd like to. <coughs> Retail has always been a, um, an important uh, sector for Leeds um, and obviously with, as I mentioned before, headquarters of ASDA, m and started here. We've got, um, you know, great, to anybody who's been to Trinity, I think we'll see that there's a new buzz about that. Um, we've managed to stick with the arcade theme of the city, um, which is a, I think is a, a really beautiful new space for, for shopping and experience in the city centre. The Trinity Kitchen idea is a new way of looking at a food court and it's a great opportunity to showcase independents like Manjit's Kitchen was in there recently, a great company um, from this part of the world and I would encourage any of you who know those smaller food retailers, food businesses um, to get them, on, get them onto Trinity, get them onto Land Securities and make sure that they're, they're looking at that opportunity. But we've increased footfall into the city centre by 2 million people since Trinity arrived. And that's booking a trend um, from other places where retail footfall is, is reducing. So, and, and we've managed to do that without a single extra car parking space, which is another, I don't think that's quoted very often, but I think it's something in terms of sustainability that we've managed to do quite successfully. We also have plans for um, Victoria Gate. I've been with the... Um, the top people at John Lewis today down in London. Those of you who like shopping, who like John Lewis, will know that Leeds and John Lewis has been the longest courtship and unsuccessful courtship <laughs> in history. 
Um, but I can absolutely positively and confidently say that it is going to happen. Um, and I've got a number of people who've told me that if I don't do anything else in my job, just make sure John Lewis come to Leeds. And I, I think the way they'll come to Leeds in such a flagship development um, in a part of the city that, again, is a beautiful space, the Victoria Quarter, um, the plan is to double the size of the Victoria Quarter and put the John Lewis alongside it. We've bought a police station um, to uh, turn into a car park um, to make sure that the deal happens. And um, we're also talking to the Playhouse. We're investing in the uh, in Kurgate Market to make sure that that whole part of the city um, develops in, in the right way, you know, in a way that complements what's here already. And, um, you know, that I think it's really a bright position that we're in on retail and we're also very aware of the need to link that to digital um, as well and um, obviously it's linked in terms of footfall to the leisure industry and the arena. Um, the Leeds arena the most um, that will be as um, its global owners SMG say in the top five in the world within the next year. Bruce Springsteen asked to play it with, we, with the genius of local government, we gave him a parking ticket. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you laugh, but actually the genius is that we wouldn't have appeared in the global news if we hadn't done that. So it was all part of the plan. Um, I've been castigated for why we didn't actually enforce it with him. Um, but that's just Twitter for you, isn't it? Um, I, uh, but... He's now gone back and told Pearl Jam that if they're going to play one place in the UK, they've got to play the Leeds Arena. Um, Rod Stewart said it was in the top two um, places he'd ever played alongside Madison Square Garden. So any of you who haven't had the opportunity, I would encourage you to go there. It's going to be a fantastic asset for this city. And um, the way that um, SMG have gone along with and, and really embraced the work we're doing on things like foster and adoption in Leeds and supported the Child Friendly City initiative that we've got is a great example for me of the sort of businesses that we'd like in Leeds and the ones that we'd, we'd, you know, we'd like to get more involved in the work we're doing in the city. Um, housing and uh, development, we have a proposal that uh, we've just heard about, we're in dialogue with about an inspector at the moment for 70,000 new homes in Leeds. That's the biggest, if it's approved, will, it will be the biggest development of housing outside London and the South East, the biggest in the country. So, you know, that in itself is, uh, when you hear of these talk, this talk about garden cities, well, that single development in Leeds of growth is the equivalent of what they're talking about in terms of a new garden city. But it won't be done in terms of an urban sprawl. It will be delivered in terms of um, in keeping and very sensitive to the federal nature of Leeds as a city. So any of you who know Leeds will know that it's, it is a collection of towns and villages. Um, it's not a, a city that's had a, you know, a very sort of urbanised heart and nothing else. So we've tried to do that in a very sensitive way and I, I believe it will be, you know, it, it will give us the future growth that we need to not, because business opportunities and economic success is not just about um, the businesses themselves. It's about the city as a whole and the experience people have of coming here and working here and living here. And that's the whole, if you like, that we're trying to look at. There's lots of other developments happening as well. We've got Kirkstall Forge. We, we're blessed in Leeds to have a Cistercian monastery, and it's not still going as a monastery, an ex-Cistercian monastery within a few miles of our city centre. And that, as an, in, as an infill space in the city, that will bring thousands of new jobs, thousands of new um, of new homes to a space in the city that, that doesn't have that much um, in in terms of new development. So a great a great opportunity for us as well. We have Thought Park um, that's now um, a, an agreed planning and proposal. Of, again, thousands of new jobs. Um, we've got uh, White Rose, the white the expansion of White Rose, which again is done in a very sensitive way not to unduly hurt or you know, eat into and cannibalise other retail in the city, um, bringing very much needed jobs to the south of the city. 
we also talk we we also could um, talk about green the green economy and the work that we're doing there. I think that's a, a new one. I'm happy to answer any questions on that. I won't go into great detail, but suffice to say that we have a new energy for waste facility in the city that will be that is being built at the moment. We have plans for um, how we can do more in terms of district heating. We're interested in local authorities as how we make more of our purchasing power. We are a huge consumer of energy. Um, we're also, uh, uh, you know, people who produce waste um, in terms of uh, the schools, in terms of food waste, in terms of obviously the refuse that we collect. We collect half a million bins a week in Leeds. So how could we um, take advantage of that critical mass and maybe not just work as a city, but work as um, a collective of local authorities to tap into that green agenda and that green energy capability. And we are actively thinking about whether to set up uh, our own energy company. And I would say to you now, if we were starting from scratch, um, we, would, we would own an energy company um, because, we, because of the scale and the significance of what we do as consumers of that energy, um, as local authorities and, um, if you like, producers of waste or, or collectors of waste on behalf of the city. Um, but we're not there, um, so how do we work with the market and how do we work the, with the grain to make sure that happens? Finally, I'm just going to talk a bit about um, the, the about poverty and about, if you like, the lower end of, some might describe it, of the, of the economy. Because I think something that hasn't been done before is, is, a, is thinking about the, um, the issue for us of this two-speed economy and the fact that within a mile of here, we have people who don't really know what's going on in the city centre, don't venture there, they're not in the mainstream economy, they don't feel part of the city, and we need to give them a chance to get more involved in what we're doing. And we have a real concern that there are probably about 20,000 people in this city who, if we don't do anything, are going to get into debt and go into um, further problems, uh, even more than they are at the moment, and go further into poverty. We have about 27,000 young people who are, who are on benefits between the ages of 16 to 24. How do we do something about that? How can that not be a fundamental part of our economic strategy? So we're launching on Friday a very interesting piece of work with the Joseph Rowntree Foundation. Who have um, The Joseph Rowntree Foundation, for those of you who don't know, they're not somebody who um, you sort of uh, give money to. They choose to come and do research with you. So we're really um, privileged to be doing that and it's going to be a very interesting piece of work to look at how an anti-poverty agenda can make a real difference to the economic strategy of a city. And again, I'd be happy to, well, I'd be happy to talk a bit more about that after Friday when the launch happens, but it's a very, very interesting piece of work and one that I think is different, again, from our, our traditional approach to economic development that would have only seen that two-speed economy issue as being one about, well, We'll have to make sure that we uh, we get some job shops set up in the poor areas of the city, and we give people opportunities to get get a job. Um, it's a much more intensive and integrated approach to how we address that issue than we've ever had before. Um, before I finish, I don't want to just talk about Leeds because the Leeds city region is the the labour market. That's the real economy of what we do. Leeds is not an island, and increasingly we are working with our partners, and we are complemented by our partners. So in Wakefield we have a great logistics and distribution industry, we have the great Hepworth um, Gallery um, to complement the, uh, the Henry Moore Institute in Leeds and the Sculpture Park. We have Bradford, um, a new University Vice-Chancellor, very keen on how they develop as a producer city, some great manufacturing companies um, and um, financial services companies and headquarters um, bodies in, uh, based in Bradford. When you, um, when you put them together with what we've got in Leeds, the critical mass is just so much greater. Uh, we have in Huddersfield, the university that's won the Enterprise um, University of the Year, um, great advanced engineering um, companies in that part of the world like DB, uh, David Brown, and um, examples like the, um, I think it's the 3I, 3M Centre, which is uh, almost like those of you who know the Advanced Manufacturing Park, in Sheffield, it's like a mini version of that. It's a great development and one that we need to do more. York Science City, um, Dean Clough in Halifax, 
um, the, the Lloyds footprint, the Halifax footprint in, in Halifax and Calderdale. All of those things are really important. So that collaboration that I mentioned is where I think that if we're going to get future powers from government, um, either this government or the next one, whoever of whatever colour they, they are and you decide at the next general election, um, then that <coughs> is going to be the place where any powers come down to. And that's why the collaboration that we're doing, it's a new body called the Combined Authority, is really important because if we operate just on our own, we won't get those new powers. We're building new partnerships with Manchester. Um, I've gone all the way through this without mentioning them. Um, they are a great um, partner to have in terms of that agenda about how do we get more power to the north. We think we should work more closely with them on rail franchising in particular, so we have a new partnership that's trying to do that. If you imagine the tube map on the top of the country, then it's the same distance um, from one end of the central line to the other as it is about from uh, Manchester to Leeds city centres. So if you think in those terms, start thinking differently, then the growth opportunity of putting all those places together and getting the business opportunities going in right across that part of the world and getting a much better link between the two main drivers of the economy, Leeds and Manchester, what a difference that could make as well. I haven't even talked about HS2. Um, I'm happy to, again, to answer that in questions. I think it's absolutely something we need to support. It's something that we're very aggressively, I think, and proactively going to be um, making the most of in terms of the economic and regeneration opportunity. We're redeveloping the South Bank of Leeds, the South Bank of the city, is to, to a scale that's about the size of Edinburgh Newtown, if any of you know that. Um, the Waverley station coming in, the HS2 station will be coming in and um, we've got fantastic opportunities. Two colleges are going to be down there, a free school in terms of education. There's the great industrial heritage of uh, Temple Works and Tower Works and the Round Foundry and Marshalls Mill. We've got the ASDA headquarters, we've got the new dock development, we've got district heating plans, super fast broadband with AQL down there. You know, there, there, are, there are lots of really, really exciting opportunities down there that could make a real difference as well as the Enterprise Zone. So I, um, I think I'll probably bring it to a close, but I think suffice to say that we, we had an idea of civic enterprise when we, uh, we wrote the, the Commission on the Future of Local Government a few years ago. And um, a few months ago, let's say, um, it's about 18 months ago. And I think we've, read, we've made a real start on the things that we talked about in that uh, strategy around things like um, good growth and new homes and jobs that, that councils had to make sure happened. Um, a new social contract between the citizens of the city about how we de deliver public services. I haven't talked about that, but I could wax lyrical about family group conferencing and how we're working to reduce the number of kids in care um, in the city. 21st century infrastructure, the, the district heating, the digital stuff that I talked about. But, you know, we've got some great initiatives. Leeds Empties. Um, we've got um, Emma Beam and the March of the Robots initiative. Any of you who want to get involved in that, we've got um, the uh, Leeds Community Foundation here as well, if you're interested in getting involved in the social inclusion excellent work that goes on in the city. Yesterday, I went to two organisations called Neighbourhood Networks, and they, were, they are an amazing asset for our city. Um, they're basically small charities and social enterprises that exist to help elderly people in the city. So I went to one in Gipton and one in Bramley, and they're, they're staffed full of volunteers. And if you could go and experience the... Uh, the Tuesday um, lunches that go on with the elderly people there. And um, the, the uh, Karen who runs the Gipton one was telling me it's ba basically like being in a nightclub with a load of 70 and 80 year olds. Um, that's what we mean by best city. Um, it's not just about the economy. The economy is absolutely vital, but it's about having a stake, a civic stake in what we're trying to do. And everybody here, whether you're a student, whether you're a business, whether you're an, a different you know, social enterprise, a micro or a big organisation, all of you have a part to play <coughs> and we want to do that with you um, in Leeds City Council. So thank you very much. Using Foster for Leeds as a model, um, and excuse this blatant self-publicity, but 
Um, could you explain, Tom, given the way that the council's operating differently and um, when we do business with people and the partnerships we're developing, what sort of things business could do to engage with our work and what we can offer in, in response? So, first stretch is a good example, with British Gas, kind of Waitrose. Yeah, I mean, any of you who are interested in getting involved in those sort of initiatives, sometimes it's just getting the message out to your staff. So you never know um, who in your organisation might be interested in getting more involved. And um, so we, we'd really like you to, to publicise the work that we're doing. Um, if you want to give some um, free pro bono work to us, we're always happy to take that on in terms of um, helping us to work through some of the issues we've got in the city. Um, the Child Friendly Leads initiative is one that's really um, an important one to us and one that we're trying to, to make sure we follow through. So basically if you've got any, you know, any practical, very practical suggestions about how you might be able to help, um, then just get in touch with us and let us know. That would be great. Okay, there must be other questions because I've seen some real characters in here today. <laughs> Hi. 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 Um, just a quick question, Tom. What's the city in the world you most admire, and why? And what have you learned from them that you're maybe applying in Leeds? Um, I think I think I'd probably say Copenhagen, and I, I I've actually never been there, but I'm going there in August, <laughs> and uh, to try and back up what I've just said. The, I guess the I haven't mentioned the Tour de France. Um, the Tour de France was a, an amazing win against the odds and something that drove home to me how geared against success in those sort of uh, battles, if you like, those sort of competitions we are. Um, because it was, it was so geared towards different parts of the, the UK rather than ourselves, let me put it that way. And it would be great for you to come back to the next one if it's Gary Verity or somebody telling that story. But the thing that's come out of that, which again I haven't mentioned, is that we, we've got a big grant to, to develop a cycle, cycling superhighway, as we're calling it, from the east to the west of the city, right the way through to Bradford. So rather than taking your life in your hands as a cyclist, which I know some of you who have written to me and uh, have, have not, let that be lost on us that the Tour de France is coming but it's actually not that safe to cycle in Leeds at times um, we're going to have a brand new um, way to, to commute into the city um, including from Bradford um, which is, which is going to be fantastic and I think in terms of place making you know Copenhagen is, is the model that I would you know I would, I would want to go and see in terms of what they've achieved the other one I nearly said was London I mean I, I you know I I think London, we're, we're far too obsessed with London in this country, but um, London is such a, it is actually a real asset to us. We're only two, ma two hours away, we're going to be even shorter distance away, it's the world financial capital, so let's make the most of it rather than um, complain about it all the time. Um, but Copenhagen is probably the more politically correct answer, um, and the one that I'll go for, in case Bernard's going to quote me on that. <laughs> Disappointed if I didn't ask you a question, Tom. Um, as someone Leeds born and bred, Leeds United um, is a bit of a joke now. But in the past, when wherever you went in the world, um, if you said you came from Leeds, that was the first thing they said. Leeds United. Ha, isn't it time that the city managed to rally round to get some decent management there and decent ownership? Yes. Um, I think it. I think it is. I. I you know. I, I mean. I've been. Um, it's a bit of a joke that I. I support Middlesbrough, um, and people quite enjoy that, especially when we're doing even worse than Leeds. It. May, I. I. My story is it makes people feel better. Makes Leeds United fans feel better about themselves. Um, but it's a desperate shame what's happened um, this weekend. Uh, Brian McDermott is somebody who. I was really, you know, as soon as he arrived at that club, we heard a week later, so no one, no PR person told us this, we started picking up that he'd started going off to the schools in the city, just ringing them up, turning up, having a session, you know, talking to the kids about um, how they could get inspired to do more um, in education. And 
you know, I think the way he was treated this weekend was shameful. Um, what I think we need to do from here is exactly what you say, which is make sure that whoever is in control of the club um, has the best interests of the city in mind. And it's a bit like, for me, being chief exec of the council is, you know, you're only ever a custodian of something. It's never about you. It's never going to be about you. It's about you trying to put something into a better shape than when you inherited it for the people who come next, because the thing's going to be there um, and it's going to endure. And um, I think the football club's the same. And I would love the, it, it if we got people into the club who had the values and the you know that long-term vision for for the city that we share. And you, and there's some fantastic people in there. Um, Mick Ferguson, who runs the foundation, was you know not backed over many years by um, Ken Bates. And I think you know he's the sort of person who is just crying out for a bit of support. Um, to take forward. So we're, I think you may be aware that the council has made its views known to the Football League and um, you know, we'll see where that goes next. But um, we've got you know, our fingers crossed that it's, it's, you know, it's run by people that have exactly the values you describe. The missing link in our image is a premiership football team. You know, in global terms, the, whatever people would like to say about the different sectors and the different initiatives in the UK, the brand that travels more than anything that is a universal language is, foot, is premiership football and um, what we need is Leeds United back in the premiership um, being successful and as a if you like a symbol and an emblem of what we're trying to do in the city um, and you know I'm hopeful that will happen and the, the example I would give is the Rhinos Leeds Rhinos if you had to invent a sports club um, that would have all the values you wanted to, to operate in the way that you wanted you would invent Leeds Rhinos they are absolutely fantastic at getting involved in stuff we're trying to do. You know, they've got excellence on the pitch. They've got the right attitude. People like Kevin Sinfield are just brilliant in terms of getting behind some of our initiatives. And, um, you know, if only we could have that sort of um, approach in Leeds United, and hopefully one day we will. Hi. Hello. Um, I called possibly a naive view um, on London in particular. And that is that as the prices of housing and living in London and the cost of living spirals out of control, that opportunities are going to present themselves with large organisations moving away from London. And I just wondered <coughs> what your sort of feelings are on identifying those opportunities with various organisations and how you feel Leeds is positioned in office space and the like of competing with Manchester, Birmingham and the rest of it going forward. I, th I think uh, I think it's happening already. Um, I think that uh, you know one of the things I said to the select committee yesterday was that you know if you, we've got such scarce resources at the moment in public in the public sector, was the piece of public policy that we needed really to um, to make sure that house prices went up more in London with the help to buy scheme. And, and I would argue that that money would have been much better spent by London on infrastructure. You know, I'm not saying London shouldn't have that resource, but why not have different approaches across different parts of the country? Because we in the north probably did need a boost to our housing um, that, that wasn't needed in London and the South East. But I think we're very well placed. There is, a, um, I think, a need for new grey day office space in the city. And that is now starting to be responded to rightly by the market. And, you know, that will happen. And I'd much rather be in a position where we had that come in on stream, um, you know, in, in a sustainable way, rather than having, you know, a million square feet of vacant grade A office space in the city. So, you know, I, I, and in terms of the skills base and the, these places, you know, we have 100,000 students in Leeds, one in seven people in the city. And... That is the thing that gets people to, that gets us onto shortlists. I think what we've got to start doing is translating <coughs> real results from those shortlists. And, um, you know, I'm confident that Leeds and Partners will be, are already starting to do that. We can see that with the things that have happened over the last few months, and I expect more of that. I think there's another one down here. Yeah, I, I assume I have to come back to the connectability that you were talking about. Uh, why don't we have a railway station at the airport, which is maybe a mile away from Harrogate Line, 
that will give us connectivity with Manchester and Heathrow uh, and all the people who live here. Is there a problem there? Um, it's quite a quite a live topic. Um, well, well spotted. You've saved someone else asking that. I, I, I think with um, the, the airport, Leeds Bradford Airport, I think has done extremely well to um, expand and to to be successful in a very difficult market at the moment. So we have, you know, we're very um, positive about that, and we think that the current arrangements in the um, in the airport are working well. I think the problem um, is, as you've rightly identified, that the public transport links to the airport are not good enough. And I think that's something that we're trying to address through the transport um, proposals that we've put to government, where one of those is to improve the transport links in exactly the same way that you've described. Uh, however, there is another question, which is which has been asked by the leader of our council, which is whether in the long term, and I'm talking about the very long term, given that HS2 is happening, whether the airport is in the right place and is going to be connected up to HS2 when it happens in the way that we, you know, we need it to be. Now, it may be that we are where we are and that's where we end up, but that's a question that I think is worth asking at such a significant point. So either we've got to get the public transport sorted to the current airport, or in the longer term we need to look at that wider question. Hi. Sorry, I'll come back over there as well. I thought for Rotterdam, as an equivalent and probably a better competitor to Copenhagen, <laughs> based on this, that we can think of many UK cities which have got multiple universities, Liverpool, Birmingham and Manchester particularly spin to mind. So what do you do with your relationship with the universities in Leeds it is better? And where, if you had a magic wand, should that relationship evolve in the next five years? If um, you were running the place, if you are running the Leeds universities, how should that improve yet further? I think what we probably need to do is to get a better sense of priority um, in the areas of innovation that we will ally on and that we'll pitch into people like the research councils and the technology strategy board and other corporates to work with. So I think a much more coherent strategy around that is needed. But in terms of critical mass, I wouldn't just stick to the Leeds universities, the three Leeds universities, I would extend it to Bradford, Huddersfield and York as well. Because if you look at that critical mass and that proximity in, you know, in, uh, in area, then we have a massive asset there that we're probably underselling. And um, so when I mentioned healthcare before, you know, I think that's one that we really could make more of and that we need to think about not just in terms purely of John Fisher's department over there at the university, but the wider links that we can make. So. I'm a great believer in, you know, again, a bit like the talent base of the students, it's the, it's the um, intellectual capital that the universities bring to the table um, that can really make a difference to the economy. So maybe getting a, a stream of, um, we have quite a low take-up of patents in Leeds, which is probably lower than it should be for the, the you know, the, the, the research institutes that we've got here. So why is that? And there's an area where you know we should be working more to make sure we've got incubation space and grow on space for those sort of sort of business ideas. You talked about having more powers. If you got more powers from the central government, how would you, how would you how would you use them and change things? Um, I, I would give a simple example. It's taken us 25 years to get our first major public transport scheme in Leeds, the NGT, the trolley bus, and basically if we had the powers that we think we should have then to make a decision about that sort of development whether it was a trolley bus or a tram or a you know or something else would take us a matter of months and so i think transport and infrastructure is um, absolutely vital to the future development of the city and that would allow you to bring in not just a you know a single um, a single scheme, but you could link it up to the the uh, ambition we've got around cycling, and and making a you know a much more walkable and livable city and city centre in particular. 
you could link it into the, the housing growth that I mentioned and help that pay for part of the um, infrastructure development that you're looking to produce. Um, and you could, you know, you could link it into many other things as well. So, and I, I would route that through the combined authority, you know, not just in Leeds as a city, but the, the collective partnership of the West Yorkshire and York authorities. And I would make sure that that was transparent and, you know, clear about the initiatives that we'd invest in. So, you know, there's one example where I basically think we can do things a lot better, a lot quicker, and a lot more in a lot more integrated way than Whitehall departments can, um, 250 miles away, where we're too often a far away county of which they know nothing. Um, you know, I, I get increasingly frustrated that we're, you know, we are treated a bit like the hicks from the sticks sometimes when we're talking to some of these Whitehall departments and. Um, we've got to have that control, we've got the capacity to do it, we've got the schemes to do it, we should be given the ability to get on with it. So any final question? Hi, uh, Tom. Thank, thank you very much. Um, I was really interested in picking up of the issue about what the universities can do working together with um, the city council. Uh, and, and I think if we just um, focus on the ill health, I think we'll be missing the trick. You know, a lot of the kind of innovation, a lot of the patents and things, but focus on ill health. And um, I, I know the City Council do very well at partnerships. And I mean, we have a partnership with you here at, at Leeds Metropolitan. We've, we've just appointed a, a joint health and wellbeing policy um, office. So we've got opportunities really for, for promoting health and well-being in the city. And in this Institute in for, for Health and Wellbeing, we look um, at communities uh, and, and uh, what makes or enables, if you like, uh, communities to, to be healthy. And so I was very interested in your example earlier that you used about your neighbourhood networks, because what you were, I think what you were talking there is about community assets, because actually communities quite often uh, have the answers themselves. <coughs> that's what we're here about, really, at least much more you know, in the Institute for Health and Wellbeing. But my question, if I can finally get to a question, is um, a lot of that is about how we, you, uh, working together, these and partners, actually work together to support the third sector. Uh, because I think um, investment into the third sector uh, uh, leads towards getting a lot more um, from our book, basically. So we make it make a lot for, for, for very little investment. So I guess my question is, finally, um, how can you uh, support uh, the third sector? Uh, and also, you know, we've got many business um, uh, businesses here. Is there something that you, Lisa to Council, can do in order to kind of broker, if you like, um, um, deals or, or uh, partnership work between um, the third sector uh, and businesses in order to promote uh, uh, their fantastic work in the city, the use, of, you know, the, the enablement really of those assets that communities have? I, I think the uh, I think you make a really good point, and I. I I would just encourage any of you to, to try and um, look at the, the third sector as, an opportun as a business opportunity um, in the future. Um, and uh, as I said before, we've got Sally Ann from Leeds Community Foundation here. There's Leeds Ahead in the city as well who you can, you can do that with. But the biggest difference we've made to the third sector in the council since I, since I arrived is that we gave um, long-term contracts to the 37 neighbourhood networks. So it was not about um, a big new slug of money. It was that long-term certainty, rather than every year, you know, every February, them wondering whether they were going to get the money again, and they did. But w by putting them on a long-term footing, they've now been able to access funding from national organisations because they've got that stability um, that they've never been able to do before. I think they're very small organisations sometimes, so they would really benefit sometimes from what I mentioned before in terms of some of the pro bono work, but I think if we could work on those sort of agendas, it would make a massive difference to people in the city. And one thing we're trying to do is to get, for example, is get GPs to prescribe um, people you know, going to those luncheon clubs, um, because it's that that makes the difference to individual and individuals often and keeps them out of hospital it's about i was talking yesterday to somebody in bramley about and in gipton about you know just the thing about when you leave hospital somebody having gone to your house make sure it's warm make sure you've got your fridge stocked up you know all of those things can make a massive difference to people 
in the city and save us loads of money in the public policy side. So, yeah, a great opportunity. <coughs> I'll leave it there. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, well, I guess the message that's come out is that we're all part of Leeds community, wherever we're from, whether you're from social enterprise, business, professional sector, industry, manufacturing, education, wherever we are, we've got a part to play. And I think we've had a real message tonight. I think there's an encouragement there in terms of the very positive message that Tom has brought to us. Uh, there's a lot going on in Leeds, and we, as citizens of Leeds, should be part of that. Please join me again in giving your appreciation to Tom.